All right. Good morning, Grace Summit. Somebody say good morning. All right. Very good. Y'all are making your seats. Going to share a few announcements with you from the bulletin, and uh, then I'm going to pray, and we're going to get started, all right? want to uh, draw your attention. First of all, if you're visiting with us for the first time, we're so thankful that you're here. If you're watching with us online on the, on the feed, we're so thankful that you are uh, watching. And uh, we'd sure like for you to respond, use, utilize our visitor card. If you're here physically and you feel comfortable with touching and that sort of thing, uh, there is a card in your uh, pew in front of you that we would sure like for you to fill out to your level of comfortability. If you put your address on there, I just want you to know, uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to knock on your door on Monday, okay? Um, and so, and just kind of like invite myself in for dinner to eat hamburger helper with you. Uh, and so, uh, just fill that out to your level of comfortability. We do want to send you a card. If, if you want me to come and visit you, I will do that. I'd be glad to do that. If you're comfortable with doing that during this uh, time, I'm, I'm happy to do that. And so, uh, we'd what, what you need to do with that is fill that out and put in the, uh, the box marked offering there. Just put that in, just slide that in that little slot there, and that'll work. If you are watching live or you want to do the digital card, you can text, use your phone to text 636-742-1011. That's 636-742-1011. Text anything, text hi, and uh, we're going to send you back a digital card. If you're watching online, you can do that, and, and we can connect that way. We've had several online that have contacted us that way, and uh, we can answer questions that you have about your church. We'd love to pray for you in any way that you would have us to pray, and uh, we'd sure like for you to, to thank you and reach out to you in that way. Uh, and if you're here physically and you'd rather go that route, that, that is available to you. If you're watching online, uh, this might be a time to start a watch party, to hit share and start a watch party. Before you do that, we'd like for you to comment on the live stream so that I know that you're there. I can't see your watch party, especially if I'm not friends with you yet on Facebook or something like that. Um, but send a comment. Let me know that you're here, that sort of thing. A couple announcements. This Wednesday, say Wednesday is backpacking, and this is our last backpacking, right? And uh, so we're going to be back. Are we going to backpack double? This I'm not going to put you on the spot here. All right, so we're going to backpack. We're going to get her done. Uh, this Wednesday at 930 at the United Methodist Church down the street, our buddies over there, uh, you come around back at the back of the building there, and it uh, at the, door, the door will be kind of ajar in that sense, and you can go in there, and uh, we pack backpacks for kids that are in need in that way. That night is a special business meeting, 6.30. The details of that are in the, uh, the bulletin there for you to read. Uh, if you're watching live, you want me to make that known to you, uh, send me an email and I can make that known to you uh, so that everyone is in the know. We, we were going to do this last week. We canceled last week because of just all the stuff going on. We moved it to this week, okay? So uh, that's going on this Wednesday, and then we'll have a time of, of Bible and prayer as well. Uh, in March, in March, leading up to Easter, uh, is going to be the Annie Armstrong Easter Offering. That's for the North American Mission Board that uh, deals with missions at uh, cl uh, close to home, okay? And you can read more about that in your bulletin. I just want you to know that that's coming. We'll have some videos and such to share with you so that you can be in the know about that. Uh, if you look in your bulletin, it says Help for Family in Villa Ridge. We had uh, known to us a, uh, that there was a family in Villa Ridge whose, whose home had burnt. And they've basically just lost everything, guys. And so... What, what I've done is we've reached out and we've said, how can we help? And right now, uh, one of the most pressing needs is just really close. We're, we're just right at having close. Um, they, they have some food, and so close is, is a big need. And I've just put the, uh, Carol and I put the sizes in there for you. And uh, if you want to bring them to the office, bring them to me and during office hours or after, and I can meet up with you and do that. Um, that might, that's a good start for us to love that family, okay? And, and so that I just want to make that aware to you. Uh, the pant sizes are there for you. If you're watching, you don't have this uh, bulletin in front of you, uh, you reach out to me, and I can get that information to you as well. Email that out to you all. And uh, that's one way we can be boots on the ground, help this family out that uh, has lost so much. I want to remind you of our Sunday school groups that are starting up. The, the rooms have been changed. We've First of all, we've enumerated the number, the, the rooms out there, you may have noticed, um, but uh, some of our rooms have changed up. We've gone into different rooms, and so I just want to make you know anything that has one zero is this 
hallway on this floor down this way. So, and then you can see the numbers 101, 102, 103. And so just, just so you know that, so we can pass that information along, that's what's going on there. And then um, we, we've had to cancel a few services, a couple Wednesday nights, um, and we've done that by email, Facebook, all stuff. But the easiest way that you can get that instantly is by text. And so we have a number that you can call to get on our remind system so that I can just send out a text and you can instantly know if something's getting canceled, okay? And so you don't have to make the trip out of here. So that's the easiest way. I'm, uh, that's in the bulletin as well. So I'm going to pray. And then uh, Miss Barbara's going to do the prelude for us. That's an opportunity for us to still our minds and hearts before the Lord, prepare ourselves for worship. A lot going on, right? Uh, but it's good to see uh, y'all here. And uh, we can pray and still ourselves before the Lord before we get loud, okay? Uh, let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for your day that you have set aside, that we can rejoice, be glad in it, and praise you in spirit and in truth. Lord, would you help us and guide us by your spirit to honor you in that way? We pray, Lord, for those that are in need. I want to pray for this family in Villa Ridge who, who has just lost so much. And we pray for their son. and. We pray, Lord, that we might be the hands and feet of Jesus in this situation to meet a need. Would you help us, Lord, to do that? And would you help this family to be, to be able to begin to rebuild at this time? Uh, Father, I want to pray for North American missions at this time. And uh, just our neighbors in Canada and Mexico and all of, all of the other places that are affected by this Missouri, this uh, missions offering that we're going to take in March. I pray for missionaries and church planners here uh, close by, but also in places that are uh, connected to that uh, that we don't even think about. And uh, pray for them and lift them up to you. And pray, Lord, that we might be uh, on mission here and thinking about church planters all over as well. We pray, Lord, that we might honor you today as we come to you in worship and song and reading the scriptures together and praying like we are right now and hearing your word preached, we pray, Lord, you might empower us to receive it and apply it in our lives. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's hear the prelude together.
I invite you to stand with us as we sing hymn 364, Send the Light. There's a call comes ringing for the restless wave, send the light, send the light. sang this next song, it was, uh, it was an empty crowd, and just before a, a live stream, somewhere in March of last year, and we just thought it was such an appropriate song for this season, and just the loneliness and the ability and that stillness to trust in the Lord still, and, and just to sing even whenever it's an empty room, or just the stillness of that moment of, of hardship, and so I pray that it might bless you as we sing it together. Count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out The same Yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is 
Let's sing together all the way in hymn number five, How Great Is Our God. We trust in the Lord today. No matter what goes on in our lives, no matter what season of life we're wrestling with, we extol him. Why? Because he is so great. And above all the ways and all the doings of our life, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So we lean on him today. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. See, he rests himself. He rests himself in light. In darkness drives.
think to our offering, which is also a part of our worship. And if you're visiting with us here, and, or if you're watching for the live stream for the first time, don't feel like that is a call um, financially for you. If you feel the Lord living, uh, leading you to give, um, we believe that that is a part of worship too, and, and uh, we would certainly be supportive of that. But we draw upon this time in prayer, prayerfully, because we come together with tithes and offerings to give to the Lord, to continue the work of ministry. Uh, same for me, this ain't about me. It's about our ministry together here in Grace Summit, what we do collectively to be a light here in this area in Franklin County. And we want to invite you, if you don't know it already, we have a tool called Tidely, and it's a way that you can give online. And so sometimes when you see that budget numbers in the bulletin, it's not the full story because those get calculated all at once with Tidely. And so... If that's something that would benefit you to use, we want to invite you to use that as well. To do That's how Sarah and I give personally. And so I want to invite Dean. He's one of our uh, precious deacons. And he's going to come and pray for us in his offering time. God, we love you. and take a seat and children are dismissed to Children's Church at this time. Y'all good? 
Is God good? <laughs> I want to take a survey real quick. What do y'all miss most uh, since almost a year ago when things started shutting down with all this? What do you What do you miss most? Shout it out. Yo, oh, jeez. <laughs> she said her job. <laughs> okay, what else? God bless you. H house? Hugs. Hugs. I think you've seen enough of your house the last year. <laughs> Hugs, man. Sue's a hugger. I know that. What else? Smiles. Smiles behind the mask. What else? Huh? The, the kids being at school, huh? Yeah. I feel that on a different level. <laughs> Uh, what else? Hmm? Freedom. Oh, jeez. Yeah, we're getting some amens on that, right? Just let me do something. Wed weddings of ten people or more. Praise the Lord. You know, these sort of things. One more. What you got? Eating at restaurants, I'll tell you. Uh, it's been hard, yeah. It has been tough, man. And this playgrounds, that's important. Is this thing just not cooperating with me today? Hold on, give me a second. Theme parks, concerts, anybody like going to concerts? Festivals, sports games, I'm not really that into that. I gotta tell you, I'm not really that into that. But at the end of 2019, we were moved here at Grace Summit and we were excited, I gotta tell you. And we bought, you know, every year I'd buy a planner you know, this kind of thing to plot out my calendar. And I, I bought this calendar at the end of 2019. I, I told Sarah, I said, we're going to fill this up. We're going to do some stuff. I kid you not. He said, we're going to do this stuff. So we Googled and we found out all the stuff that was happening, you know, in 2020. Well, I might as well, after I filled that thing up, I might as well set it on fire, right? And just throwing it away. I mean, I, I know that you're in the same boat that I am in. Uh, man, worse than the events. And all that junk is the separation from friends and family. The old saying goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And according to a study from USA Today, actually the study, USA Today published it, but it was the Journal of Communication. They said, couples in long distance relationships have more meaningful interactions than those who see each other on a daily basis, leading to higher levels of intimacy. Some wives in the room were saying, amen. Get him out of here, right? The way he blinks disturbs me. You know, <laughs> you spend so much time together, but too much distance is not a good thing, right? And I think that we've seen that the last year, that, uh, that there are some unfortunate side effects. The New York Times reported that extended social isolation can have serious health implications from heart disease and dementia to depression and even to death. COVID-19 is a serious issue, don't get me wrong. You've heard me say that from the pulpit. But we recognize, and when I had it, it was not fun, okay? But when we, we recognize also that we weren't built for isolation, were we? We weren't built to be apart. We've been in a series called Eyes on Me, and the focus is to keep our eyes intent on Jesus, even as we walk in the day-to-day -day life. And Paul and his companions, when they wrote this letter to uh, the Thessalonians, they longed to see them again. They had been separated, quarantined, if you will. That's a stretch of that word, but we've been stretching it for a year, right? And so... Um, they, they were set apart. They were separated from one another. And they longed to be together again. And we have a lot to learn from that example. By seeing Paul and Timothy and Silence, Silas love people from a distance, maybe we can learn, hopefully for only a couple more months, to learn people, love people at a social distance. And so I want to look at that together in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17. And we're going to cross over the chapter division to three, five. If you have your copy of God's Word, that's what we're going to be. And I'd invite you to stand. If you don't, uh, Andrew's going to have that out in the front. So I'd invite you to follow along with us. We actually, um, <laughs> that's going to sound bad, but like I'm being critical. We preach from the Bible. And so uh, if you have your Bible with you or your app or something, keep it open because I refer to those verses that I'm, when I, when I stand up here, y'all, I'm just saying, when I stand up here, I, I'm not just going to preach whatever is like cool you know what i mean i'm not going to preach whatever is on the news that now I'm, we, we got to talk about those current events we got to talk and think about those biblically but i'm I, if it's all right with y'all or if it's not all right with y'all i'm just gonna go ahead and preach from the bible okay and so we're 
if, if you got a Bible or if you got an app, if, if you want to keep it open, uh, you'll see where I'm getting this information. I'm not getting it from me, okay? You, you don't want to hear that. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17 says, But brothers and sisters, when we were orphaned by being separated from you for a short time in person, not in thought. Maybe your translation says not in our hearts, right? That's the key. Out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you. For we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, did again and again. But Satan had blocked our way. For what is our hope, our joy, or our crown, in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. Look at chapter 3 now. So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker, in God's service and spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. That is the trials. That's interesting. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labors might have been in vain. That's loving people even at a distance. Even when you have to be separated, that's a love and care uh, that is supernatural. I pray that we would have that same love and care. Father, would you help us it to be true in our life? And would you, by your Holy Spirit, convict us where there are areas in need of growth and in need of just open sin that we need to do business about? Father, would you help us to grow and to be more like Jesus today than we were tomorrow, yesterday and help us to be even more further down the path tomorrow and this week? Would you help us, Lord, to conform our love for one another, even sometimes when we don't see each other face to face like we ought? We pray, Lord, that we might love one another and we might share the love of Jesus to a lost world. We pray in his name. Amen. Go ahead and take a seat. I titled this message, Absence Makes the Heart Grow Fonder. And I felt like whenever I preached, I was telling some buddies last night, I said, I really feel like I should have preached this message like nine months ago. Because it's really the perfect message uh, of how to love somebody even at social distance, right? Even when we don't always see them as frequently as we did before. And our big idea today is that Christians support one another no matter the distance. Our outline is this. I want to look at three features of Christian support. How to love one another regardless of the distance. Look at verse 17. It says, but since we were torn away from you, brothers, for a short time in person, not in heart, we endeavored the more eagerly and with great desire to see you face to face. I can't express to you how vivid the terms are that Paul uses here. The phrase torn away in the Greek refers to mothers and fathers being separated from their children, leaving them as orphans. Uh, the phrase could be translated, we were orphaned from you, as the translation that I read just a moment ago. Referring to the Thessalonians as actually the orphans. And so we saw how Paul last week used motherly and fatherly language to describe his relationship to the church. This was a true spiritual family. And when you are ripped away from family, that is difficult. He used such dramatic language that the situation, uh, because the situation of rising persecution forced Paul and his friends to leave. With them gone, with Paul out of the way, the persecution would have decreased onto that fledgling church and so what Paul was doing was an act of love by getting out of the way so that the the tensions would begin to decline and the boil over would begin to restore and that church might not be wiped out of existence because of persecution it was an involuntary separation but a necessary one no parent likes to be separated from their children can I get real with you my children they're out of the room they can't hear me they're not gonna watch the live stream they drive me crazy okay they drive me absolutely insane I think that yeah okay you know uh, you're getting real with uh, kids right now right they drive you bonkers and yet and so Sarah begs me and says can we have some time away from these stinking kids and and I come home I'm, I'm being honest with you I come home and I'm there for one hour, and I go, Sarah, how do you do this? 
How do you, it never turns off for you. I'm going back to work. <laughs> you know, how do you do this? And yet, when we do spend that day away, it's not a couple hours, but she turns to me and says, I miss our kids. Is it weird that I, that I miss our kids, right? And about that time, I have to pull over because my eyes are rolling back in my head. But you know what? That's not weird. That's not weird. Because parents love their babies. And, and as much as y'all drive us nuts, right? Families are meant to be together. And parents hate to be separated from their children. A family is meant to be together. And even though they were being forced apart here in our text, they longed to be together again. Many of us have been forced to be apart for a number of months. And, and when there is a healthy spiritual family, there is that longing to be together again. I want to tell you, just to be real with you, if you can miss a month or more of church and feel indifferent about it, you've got a problem. You have a spiritual problem. When I call our shut-ins, who, who frankly have been strictly warned by their family and by their doctor to not be in any kind of assembly, they always say, Brother Tommy, I appreciate the live stream. I'm glad I can get you on my phone, on my iPad, on my smart TV, but I can't wait to get back to church. And oh my, do I miss Sunday school, they say. I miss Sunday school. I won't be together in a group talking about these things. Every single time I call, some, some, some of y'all are here. <laughs> That's great. As neat as the live stream is, it's not the ideal scenario. And we have never from March of last year pretended uh, like, like this is, like that's all there is to church. Just listen to me speak. Just put me on a phone and do that. No, that ain't it, man. It's about this. And so Christians, number one, in supporting one another, they value community. They value community. The live stream may be necessary for some folks. And so folks that are watching, don't think that I don't appreciate you and appreciate the struggle that it is to try to figure out what to do in this scenario. But we all know, we all recognize that the ideal is to be face to face. That was Paul's ideal too. They were separated in person but not in heart. That made their separation as short as possible. Did you notice that? We, we try to endeavor to be together as soon as possible. Some of us have to be separated in quarantine. Remember that? Some of us were separated because we're at high risk. And, and I would not, and, and some of the cases that you and I both know, I would not sit and I would not beat somebody over the head because they're sitting with in a completely uh, immune compromised and they are rolling the dice to even be here on Sunday morning. But we endeavor to make the separation as short as possible. We got to get back to church. And we endeavored the more eagerly and with great desire to see you face to face. In Paul's day, the best that they could do was send a letter or Timothy or both. They had no Facebook, no FaceTime, no email, no text messages or Zoom. But I don't think that that would have cut it for Paul and his gang. Notice what he said. He said, we need to be together face to face. There's something irreplaceable about face to face interaction. Y'all sick of Zoom calls yet? Anybody? Am I the only one? You know, get, I'm just, I want to break my computer, right? Wouldn't be the first time. The, re the reason why they couldn't be together, Paul says, is because Satan had hindered them. And it's funny because in that Greek phrase, Paul relies on military jargon, the strategy of an enemy of cutting out, cutting off a trade route by destroying, wrecking the road so uh, that carriages and such could not, traveling cargo could not get through the road. And so uh, Satan had been cutting them off. There is a spiritual warfare that was at place for the souls of the Thessalonians. And I want to tell you today in all sincerity that there is a battle for the soul of Grace Summit today. And our adversary, the devil, would love nothing more than for us to turn a justified season of social distance into an unjustified departure from church altogether. The, 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 the devil would love for us to be professional live stream watchers or just professional Sunday sleep inners, if that's a word. Paul's group, the church was their, their joy and honor, the reward for their faithfulness and, and witnessing. Have you thought about that? The only thing that you can bring to heaven are the people that you have impacted here. Your spiritual family, that's how vital community is. Can I ask you something, near or far today? Are you eager to be with Christian brothers and sisters? I know in my heart 
that we have folks watching even now that long to be here. And that's, that's because they believe and love the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is working in their lives. And yet, uh, and yet we have to have these things in place. I don't see Christians sometimes that are eager to be together in community. Maybe they sit in a pew uh, for an hour and then it's tires squealing in the parking lot to get out of here. That is, that's not community. It's not just about what we do in an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. It's about the community. Why not stay a while and be together? Now, some of y'all, some of y'all might as well have a bed here, all right? Because, because after church, you do stay a while, right? Uh, you do hang out. You, you don't necessarily have to do that. But why don't you stay a while? Community is vital. Y'all know I'm playing. By the way, y'all know that the verse and chapter numbers are not, uh, they were added later, right? Y'all know that. Though they aren't inerrant, right? Though I believe the Bible is the word of God. I believe it's inerrant. I be, believe it's infallible. But the, the divisions are, are kind of a helpful tool added later, right? That's why we're going to cross into chapter 3. I want you to see it with me. Chapter 3, verse 1. Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we were willing to be left behind in Athens alone, and we sent Timothy, our brother and God's co-worker, in the gospel of Christ. You know, traveling in the first century was hard. Uh, there were dangers on the roads of nighttime, of bandits, of wild animals, and Besides that, there was a lot of stuff to carry, right? There was a lot of belongings that they had to carry on their backs. And you realize that by doing this, Paul and Silas were sending their youngest member away from them. It means a lot to do that. And they had sent him back to Thessalonica. So when it comes to supporting one another, number two, I want you to see that Christians value sacrifice. Their longing led to action. They didn't just write and say, man, it would be really cool for us to be there together. They said, no, we're going to have some skin in the game. We're going to make an extra effort. We're going to send Timothy. And whatever Timothy was carrying on his back is now on the back of Paul and Silas as they track through those Greek lands. They took one out of the three, sent him back. Timothy probably had a strong back, probably could carry a lot. And yet now they had to shoulder it themselves. Timothy was the lesser known of the three. He wasn't as well known as the Apostle Paul, so he could have flown under the radar. He could have walked back into Thessalonica and, and maybe not have invited that persecution that they, had, that they had had in Acts chapter 17. They didn't have Zoom. Timothy was their Zoom. They sent the young man back. To see how things were going. To see uh, if they were doing well. Paul will do this at least two other times. One in Corinth and one in Philippi. Before he lets this poor guy settle down in Ephesus. Where we find the books of 1st and 2nd Timothy. Paul wants them to know that by sending the youngest. They weren't sent getting the leftovers. Timothy uh, had trouble garnering respect. We get the sense of that in the pastoral letters. When Paul says do not let anyone look down on you for your youth. And yet Paul gives them this impressive job title. He calls him God's co-worker. Notice that Paul calls himself God's servant. I am a servant. He calls Timothy a co-worker with God. That's, that's a pretty impressive job title. And so Paul is trying to tell him, you're not getting a second-rate soldier in the ministry when I send Timothy back to you. Timothy reminds me a little of a youth pastor. There are youth pastors that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Men of God, youth leaders, women of God that love the Lord and are legitimate in their work. And yet, there is a stereotype of youth guys, right, that are considered to be still in training. They're looked at as kind of the junior pastors that shadow around the big guy, right? I served as a youth pastor and then as an associate pastor for close to 10 years. And like a guy in his 20s, I was working through my bachelor's degree and master's degree. I did foresee me uh, standing up in front of a congregation and preaching. You remember that, Debbie, right? <laughs> and, and sometimes I was made to feel like the little fish, sometimes. But mostly the church that I was with was, was very supportive. And I remember the first sermon that I preached on a Sunday morning, being the young guy, the little fish. And after the service, people were filing by, mostly very supportive. I remember a little old lady said to me, you know, that was a good sermon. Well, I fell asleep there in the middle, but the parts that I heard were really good. I want to tell you, not much has changed in 10 years. Not much has changed. Less than you think. Timothy's goal for his mission was at least three things. Find out how their faith was doing. Strengthen them 
and encourage them. Uh, the Greek word strengthen is used to refer to putting a buttress on a building to improve its structural integrity. We need to support one another, even when it means sacrifice, even it, when it requires us uh, to be inconvenienced and to sacrifice of ourselves. Some of us are so close to falling off the deep end at times, I think. And even reaching out a little bit and providing that strength and encouragement matters. Sometimes I come to church and I wonder if the people that I come to, that come to church with me, how close they are just to, to being in tears on Sunday morning. Because of the stuff that they've waded through this week. And the junk and the burden that's on their shoulders. I, I really wonder if we would get real. How many people are that close to the brink come Sunday morning? And we have to be willing to be there for one another. Not just on Sunday morning, but week long. Even at personal cost. This is what being a spiritual family means. That's what it means. You can't do everything for everybody, but I, if I can do something, I hope that the Lord would lead me to do it. And now more than ever, there are people hurting and confused, aren't there? I mean, now more than ever, our culture keeps letting us down and offers no lasting answers. And we need to support one another in God's grace. Timothy had to go to this young church for encouragement so that they wouldn't be moved by the trials that they were facing. Look at verse 3. He said, you yourselves know that we are destined to this. Look at verse 4. For when we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer affliction, just as, as it has come to pass, and just as you know. Listen, hardship and opposition will come. It's not a matter of if, but when. And I want to tell you that the person who led you along in your Christian life and told you and promised you that you would no longer face difficulties and, and struggles, that angels were just going to lift you up so you wouldn't stub your little toe on a rock. Man, he lied to you. He lied to you. And you will be disillusioned if you think that becoming a follower of Jesus means that life will no longer be any hardship, but will be nothing but health and wealth and prosperity. By the time people figure out that that's a lie, the person, the pastor that's told them that has already made it to the bank. It's a lie. And it's how charlatans get rich. But that wasn't Paul's message. It wasn't Paul's message. These Thessalonian believers may have been surprised by the amount of persecution that they face, but Paul reminds them that he had warned them ahead of time. He said, things will be tough. This will be no bed of roses. This is going to be difficult. Can you imagine that? What if we took people that wanted to join our church and we said, hey, before you get baptized, before you come forward, uh, I need to run you through this. I want to tell you that uh, becoming a Christian will result sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes in intense opposition and hardship. But that's what Paul did. I want to tell you, the Christian life is not easy. It won't be easy, but it will be meaningful. It won't be easy, but it will be right. It won't be easy, but it will be eternally valuable. Do you want to do something of value? Do you want to do something of meaning? Do you want to do something that is right in your life? Then follow the Lord Jesus. But if you want to do something easy, that's not the place to find it. If we're supporting each other, we must be there for one another. Number three, Christians value loving concern. Loving concern. I put that as one word. Paul was concerned, fearful even, that the enemy would convince them that following Jesus is not all it's cracked up to be. That they would kind of fall away, leaving all the work and the sacrifice that Paul and his companions had made totally fruitless. I get this image in my mind when I think of that, when Ben, uh, as a little guy, would play with blocks and he would build up these huge block towers, sometimes in the church nursery, and, and Benjamin would make it and he'd have all the towers and the ramparts and, uh, and, and the flag on top and all of these things, and Judah, who was a toddler at the time, would just, just run through it as fast as he could, knocking, there wasn't a block that was on top of another block after he was done. And they're still at each other's throat like that, I don't know. It's hard to see your investment, your work, your effort, your labor totally robbed from you. I had some buddies. Uh, I, I don't know if you heard about this, but they, they got into the GameStop stock. Anybody? Anybody know about that? Anybody read the news, right? And the hedge fund managers, though I can't go into the details, but hedge fund managers were betting against GameStop. You know, GameStop and Eureka is, uh, was shutting down. That's not the only GameStop. There's been rumors and all these things of bankruptcy and things. And uh, the hedge fund manager squeezed that stock to try to bet against it and sell it at a lower 
rate than they bought it and, and all these things. I'm not a money guy. But uh, the, the Reddit guys, you know, the 20-somethings and 30-somethings, we're, we're going to uh, work against the hedge fund managers by buying up a bunch of game stock, uh, stock that would raise the price, and then the hedge fund manager would end up having to sell their stock at a higher rate than they bought it, and he would lose millions and billions, and this was supposed to be uh, such a really good revolutionary act. But it ended up backfiring on them. They, they ended up buying a lot of stock and actually losing that investment. Uh, there was a Wall Street Journal article, I think just this week, about a guy who was, I think, 23 years old, took out a personal loan for $20,000 to buy GameStop stock, and he lost every cent. Can you imagine being on the hook for that $20,000 after the fact? It's hard to see your investment become fruitless. And Paul was worried because blood, sweat, and tears had been poured into those people. And the adversary, the devil, was trying to rob him of that ministry. Our adversary wants to destroy the success that we've had as a church. In the last two years, we've seen God do some neat things. And I believe with all of my heart uh, that if we are faithful to the Lord, that we will see neat things happen in the future. That there has been and will be spiritual warfare also around the corner. There will be difficulties, there will be challenges, and Satan would love to turn little problems into big problems, distractions into the main show, and a little compromise into complacency. Be careful, because here are two of his tricks, hindering and distracting. Hindering and distracting. He can keep us so distracted and complacent where we are. Does that ring any bells in your life? Could you name some ways that he has hindered and distracted you this week? I can name ways in my life that I see the spiritual warfare in my life blocking me off course. But I find consolation in this, that our adversary is a defeated foe. Jesus said, greater is he that is in you than the one in the world. Does somebody listen to me today? Paul says of Jesus that he disarmed the rulers and authorities. He put them to open shame by triumphing over them. That's in past tense, by the way. He's done it. And the victory has been won. And now it's the time for the church to be faithful on our part. And part of that job is to have true concern for one another. No man is an island. We've got to check on each other. We've got to hold each other accountable. We've got to love one another. Listen, absence may make the heart grow fonder, but it's not the ideal. It wasn't the ideal for Paul. He said, it's time for us to get back together again. I want to tell you, uh, I'm praying. I'm praying for herd immunity come April. I told my Sunday school class that. We got to get back together. We got to be a church. Do you know why sequoia trees grow so tall and healthy? I haven't seen sequoia trees in person, you know, so much yet, but. It's on the to-do list. Do you know why they grow so tall and so healthy? You would think that they just grow deep roots. You know, deep, strong, thick roots that hold them up. Actually, that's not true. That's not true. Actually, they kind of have short, stubby roots. It's because every sequoia tree is connected to one another. Every sequoia tree that you find is connected to another sequoia tree. They grow in bunches. In other words, no sequoia tree grows in isolation. Can I tell you something? No Christian does either. No Christian grows in isolation. If you shut yourself off from the world and you say, hey, it's me and my Bible and the Holy Spirit. I don't need any voices in my life except that. You can only go so far because God is trying to grow you and teach you through community and through those voices, through those teachers in your life. If you want to flourish in what God has for you, we need one another. And we support each other best when we're in face-to-face, -face, in groups, when we show concern for one another, even when it requires sacrifice. There's been a sort of selfish movement, I think, in the church where the Christian life is about really just about self-actualization and just realizing your potential and that, you know, if you have enough private devotion, it will turn into kind of personal success for you. Man, it's not about me. It's about we. <laughs> That's what God made us to be. Paul and his friends had to do that from a distance. Because sometimes Satan blocks us off from being together. 
And for not much longer, we may have to do that for some of our folks at a distance as well. But there will be an end to COVID and an end to snow. Can I get an amen? amen. The sun will rise again and the ideal is face to face. But in the meantime, will we support one another? Will we love one another? Will we be able to reach across the distance of these things and love one another? Is there a commitment that you need to make right now? Because there's somebody that you are spiritual family with that has been orphaned from you. You've been separated, that you've lost contact with. Maybe even a person that was in this room. Maybe quarantine caused you to separate some people that you actually really needed in your life. Some voices of comfort and, and, and uh, encouragement that you've separated yourself from. And maybe this is the time to reconnect. You know, Jesus came to die on a cross for your salvation. He came to purchase men and women of God. He says he came to buy not just individuals, but a church. That's what he shed his blood on. Not so that we could have a holy huddle of some sort, but that we could be his people, his bride, his church. Are you in community today? Are you supporting one another today? I want to ask you if you're watching today or maybe you're here live, do you even know the Lord Jesus today? Do you know that he came and died for your sins so that if you would turn, repent from your life and put all your faith and trust in him and say, today I will follow the Lord Jesus. You will not have go to a place called hell, but go to a real place called heaven. You can know that today. You can make that decision today. We're going to enter into a kind of short time of response at this moment. Sing one of my favorite songs. And I want to encourage you, maybe this is the time that you need the Lord has laid something on your heart. You need to make a decision before him. Uh, maybe the Lord is stirring you just because he's brought a name to your heart today. And you need to go to the altar and pray that the Lord may reconnect you with that individual. Maybe the Lord is stirring you to take the next step, whatever it is. Maybe that's membership. Maybe that's salvation. Maybe that's baptism. It says, I need to take the next step today. You can come and you can make that decision today. I'm going to invite Sarah and Barb to come now. Would you all stand with me? And we're going to have a time of invitation together. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And Lord, as we enter into a time of decision, and Father, maybe some folks need to come to a, a wooden altar up front. Maybe they need to make an altar where they are. Because, Lord, we face the a season of intense absence. Lord, from family, from friends, from church, maybe even. And, and Father, if we reflect on the spirit of Paul, he wanted to make separations like that brief. Lord, are there, are there some here today that have been separated? And it wasn't, it wasn't just bodily, it was also Emotionally, spiritually, they became separated, disengaged. Oh, that's what I'm talking about today. Would you help us, Lord, to engage again in our heart? Father, that we might support one another by valuing community, yet also being willing to, to put ourselves out there, even when we've been hurt, and, and say, I'm going to love someone even at the point of sacrifice. And Father, because I, I love that person from a place of deep, deep concern. Father, the world doesn't have the answers. The culture fails us again and again. Lord, let us come to you now when we should have done that in the first place. And let us engage spiritually. Teach us to have a heart like yours to love one another. And Father, that even when absence is gone, we may come together as a family. But even now, we may do so in heart and in spirit. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's respond to him. Would you sing? Would you respond in your hearts?
Well, if you're watching today, if you're here today, and you're asking yourself, what is the next step? I want to invite you again to text anything to 636-742-1011, and uh, we can, and just, there's a place for you to indicate, what's my next step with God? What's the next step that I need to take? I'd ask you, ask you to fill that out so that your level of ability to do that, and then I will come back and, uh, and, and speak with you about that. Maybe there's something that the Lord is impressing you that you're not ready to do publicly because you have some questions. I want to invite you to text that number. It's in your uh, bulletin as well, and we can follow up with you in decision. So would love to do that. Our eyes see that, Sarah. Right now, Sarah and my eyes alone see that. And so uh, you can be safe that uh, that's going to be confidential. So um, I want to pray for you. Pray that you guys have a great week. Great to see you all. You know, sometimes, uh, come Sunday morning, you don't even know what to expect because some people run into a situation where they got quarantined for two weeks. You know, how they said, y'all have done really good at doing that. Um, and, and that's kind of the key to getting out of this thing. And so you never know really what to expect come Sunday morning. So, man, good to see you all here. I know that there's many that are watching online as well still. So we'll pray for them as well. Father. We thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for those that are here. Thank you for those that are watching. Uh, thank you, Lord, that all of us have to wrestle uh, with this and have to lean on you in situations where uh, we have to ask wisdom questions about when to gather and when not, when to quarantine and, and, and how to do these things well. Uh, Father, we know that absence makes the heart grow fonder, and yet the ideal is to be together face to face. Lord, we pray for those that are immune compromised, that have had Really, uh, the wisdom question is answered. They have to stay uh, isolated. We pray for them, Lord. We pray for their safety. We pray, Lord, that their conditions might improve in such that they can be with us together, Lord. But, but let that separation, let that quarantine, let these things in our life that come and go not separate us emotionally, not separate us spiritually. Lord, let us keep fostering a spiritual concern for one another that springs from the heart of Jesus. For it's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen.